Hey guys and gals, and Ari here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tangled Stars. So before we jump right into it, y'all, I wanted to go ahead and remind y'all that I'm still an affiliate with Green Man Gaming. What that means is that there's going to be a link in the description. Y'all click that link, you get discounts on all the latest and greatest games, and anything you buy using that link, I get commission on. Also, my lovely girlfriend Elle is taking commissions. I've got her FA and her Twitter linked in the description. So anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> I think better than a good gift for a friend, and for less, too. The TV was already on the news program, but some advertisement about a shop was playing. Not that I mind, I'd rather not have sports news fill my head. They always confuse me. As I was checking my phone for the first time, however, the music which plays when the broadcast starts again rung out. As promised before our commercial break, we have a live reporter over at the movement currently happening in the center of Meka. Meka, huh? The capital of Ladia? Haven't been there in literal years. But a movement? There? That's definitely new. The last one happened around three years ago on Equal Pay, which was solved shortly after. Ladia likes to keep a high image to any other countries, so whatever is asked from its citizens, it is provided quite swiftly. Thank you very much, Paul. As you can all see back home, there are hundreds upon hundreds of people gathered here today to raise awareness of what seems to be a revolutionary group of some kind. Large banners and flags are waved around with all the chance of bring the back of bring the old times back and anti kin will save our cross kin. What? That makes me drop my phone. We have yet to learn who these anti kin are, as the protests have started earlier today out of the blue. Though thankfully no brutal force has been used, as the protest is a rather mild one. I will now pass over to Rick to talk to with, talk with a protest member. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much, Sam. I am stood here with a fine gentleman who revealed that he has been a supporter of the group for a long time now. Tell us, sir, what is it exactly that the protest today hopes to achieve? He will lead us to greatness. He will rid the world of difference. He who saved us from ourselves. He whose name remains unheard. Oh, uh, right. Uh, thank you. From what we have gathered so far, this group has not been around for very long, and most members seem to reside within Rayville. And so far, the movement seems to only want to spread the message and recruit new members. That's all from us, and we shall keep you updated should anything new come up. Back to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Sam. As of yet, little is known about this group, yet they seem to be wanting nothing but peace. What? Is this a fucking joke? Whenever we find out more information on the said group, it will all be delivered here. Until then, gas prices seem to have everyone in, wide pr in widespread panic as... The Antikin spread beyond Rayville now? Are you serious? But how? They're just some gang, right? And they think they're harmless? This can't... this just can't be real. The only thing I can do is wait and hope they realize what they are. Jonah, are you alright in there? Uh... Alder's voice came from outside the door. I spaced out. Yeah, sorry, I'm coming. That was weird. Oh, that's pretty. Very pretty. Birkin. Get your Birkin stocks. <laughs> a faint voice was singing on the radio, the only sound beside that being the slight crunch of snow underneath the car. Beside me, Andy was bobbing his head in rhythm with the music, a bright smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. As we were passing the buildings of Rayville, I noticed how lively it was today. Snow melted more, deeper the, the, melted more the deeper you got into the city, so naturally it was easier to walk around. People were hustling on shop entrances, practically climbing onto each other. It was a comical sight, to say the least. Jeez, I swear people turn into animals this time of year. And I don't mean other kin. Uh, the sales are good, so... Yeah, but you don't forget you're part of a society just because of some savings. Even if they're amazing savings. My attention slowly slips away from Andy, each passing building making me fall deeper and deeper in thought. Fuck. How am I supposed to talk to him now? I feel a void in my stomach just by simply imagining seeing him face to face. How does he want me to pretend last night didn't happen at all? Ugh! I saw a woman get a black eye while trying to buy a TV. Of course, it was an ex it was accidental, but still. He shakes his head. I just want the earth to swallow me whole. Is this the stages people talk about? Sadness, then anger, then this? Complete embarrassment? What if it was all in my head? What if he didn't get close to me in reality and I just made a fool of myself? People are mad, honestly, over a damn TV. The car takes a right and enters a tighter street, where cars are packed or parked on either side. And he does, too, quite close to the entrance of the ice rink. All righty, then. He claps his hands together, then takes off his seatbelt. Ah, I'm so excited! I haven't been ice skating in so long! Before he goes to open the car's door, he does a double take. You all right there, Jonah? You hardly spoke through the journey here. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm all right. Just spaced out. Aw, oh, thinking about Alder? My heart drops to the bottom of my stomach, and I want to bury my face in my hands. Nope, just about what to get you guys for the solstice. For a moment, I thought he wouldn't buy it, but the next, he was beaming. Oh, that's adorable! To be fair, I do need some new shades. He pulls out a pair that I had no idea he had on him from his back pocket. These ones are getting old. But 
But it's winter. All the more reason to wear shades. The snow is too bright. I was about to say something else, but I just sighed to myself and just get out of the car. Yeah, sure. New shades. Noted. He locks the door and starts to lead us towards the entrance. Let's wait for them inside, all right? It's a bit chillier tonight. I nod and follow him in. That's weird looking. Masses of people were surrounding the booth where you buy your entry, and a few meters and a few meters past, a long line of people were waiting to get their skates. Ah, shit. I whispered to myself without meaning to. Yeah, it's a bit overcrowded, but don't worry. That's because the current cycle of people is about to end. This may seem like a lot, but that, that it, and that it may take ages, but it really won't. Everyone here and everyone here and more will fit on the rink, so it'll be cleared out in no time. If you say so. The past times I've been to ice skating, there was nowhere near as many people. Well, mainly because it was a smaller rink and because it was towards the end of the holidays. I just have to take Andy's word for it. Where the hell are... One second, y'all. Water time. Ah. Oh, guys, over here. Oh, fuck. Here we go. Be cool, Jonah. It's no biggie. You were only about to kiss Alder on the lips. And it might have been your head, but it might have been in your head. <laughs> oh, hey there! Andy spins around and spins me, too, to face Maple and Alder. Aw, oh, you look so cute with that scarf! Maple smiled broadly, and I instinctively touched the warm covering that surrounded my neck. <laughs> uh, thank you! Alder gave it to me. My eyes fall on him for no more than two seconds, and I managed to babble out a hello. Oh, yeah, uh, hey! For a few moments, it's silence between us, and I mean us four. The crowd of people was louder than necessary. Andy was about to say something, and it's, as, and it's as if I knew it would be about why Alder and I didn't look at each other. However, thankfully, Maple beats him to it. Wait, are those your own skates? They're so pretty! I forgot I even had them hanging from my right hand. I raise them and give, them, and give her a little smile. Thank you, and yeah, they're my own. I used to skate a while ago, so I'm hoping I still have what it takes. Ooh, exciting! I think we should get in queue now. Alder points to the line of people, and we walk over to the back. Psst. As we were walking, Maple tugs at my sleeve, gesturing me to lower myself so she can whisper to me. I do so, though a bit confused. The place was too loud for me. Was too loud of me to hear her whisper. She goes on her tiptoes and gets close to my ear, covering the right side of her mouth with her hand. It's your chance to impress Alder. It takes me a moment to register what she said, and when I was about to reply, we are we had already regrouped with, with with the other two. I look at her, and all she does is give me a wink. I have to keep a cool head, or I'm going to fall off the edge. I swear. So we wait, and surprisingly, Andy was right. The queue was moving quite quickly. It took around 20 minutes or so to get our passes, and for them to pick up on the, pick up the ice skates. Think of it as being pretentious if you want, but the thought of using rented skates makes me gag, even if they disinfect them. Ow! What? I caught my finger in the plastic thingy. How did you manage? I don't know, help me! <laughs> On the bench behind, on the bench behind me, bat battling with the skate guards is Andy. Maple finished putting hers on shortly after mine, and Alder just returned with his. Mine only use mine only use laces, thankfully, so it just doesn't take long to put them out, put them on. Plus, they're neater. Hmm. You uh, you all right, Jonah? Huh? Fuck. Yeah. Sorry. I spaced out while looking straight at him. Oh my goodness. All right. Such a bad habit. And it won't move. Stop pulling. How the fuck did you even do this? I told you. I don't know. I told you. I don't know. The last set of people left around ten minutes ago, but I think they're near... But I think they're... They're neatening the ice down. One second, y'all. Water time. Gotta keep my boy dry. If you, gotta keep my boy dry if you wanna keep that voice high. <laughs> I love it when the ice is freshly shaved and flat. It's so easy to skate them. You practically glide through the whole arena. I ah, cannot wait. This has always been the best way for me to clear my head. I get into a headspace where it's just me with my thoughts. Usually, of course, I'd hate that, but on the ice, there's just something that soothes them, soothes them down. Maybe the sound of the blades cutting the ice or the faint music filling my ears. Or perhaps neither of those. Whatever it is, it's heavenly. Three, two, one... Pull! Ow! Ow, 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 ow! My finger! Your fault for getting it stuck in the first place! Ah, screw this. Alder threw his head backwards, staring at the ceiling and taking a deep breath. You alright? It was now my turn to ask that. Yeah, this thing just won't close. 
I have half a mind to ask Maple to come help him, because honestly, I'd rather not be around him at all right now. But the other half of a, of a mind thinks that acting as if nothing happened will be for the better. I kneel down and tend to his left skate. The lace was tangled in such a way that for a moment I thought there was nothing I could do. How did I even manage to do it to do it this bad? I tried to undo it for a while, and I managed to do, sh do so shortly after I felt my fingers get sore. After tying it up neatly, I tightened the guards, locked them in place, and moved this move his ankle a bit. Is that too tight? He doesn't respond at first for some reason. Alder? Alder. Don't look up. Yeah, sorry, it's alright. Thanks. I get up and I try looking at him. My body just won't let me. My gaze averts from his. Yeah, don't mention it. I hear he was about to say something, but he cuts off by a sound cutting through the air, signaling that it was finally time to get to the get on the ice. Finally, I can't wait to... Whoa! Ah, you idiot, my hair! A punch flies to Andy's stomach as he grabs on Maple's hair. He could have stopped himself from falling with a pillar on his right, which is specifically made to help you. Silly people. The air inside the rink was way colder than the one in the waiting area, of course. There was a euphoric quality to it. I don't know how to explain it. It's like like biting into a cold peach in the middle of summer, or sipping away at some warm brew in an icy winter. It felt so right to me. So, uh, who's going first? I'd rather have someone go before me in case I fall, you know. She eyes Andy up and down. But, yeah, but what if I fall? And then you're a cushion. The atmosphere in itself, everything, felt as if it was calling to me. The temperature, the sounds, they are making my body ache with a need, with a desire. Excuse me, you're the one that looks like a stuffed animal. What did you say? You heard me. What, just because you hate being called short, you think everyone should be scared of you? Andy? No, Alder, she needs to learn that she isn't as big as she thinks she is. Metaphor metaphorically and literally. Andy? Alright. Huh? What do you mean, alright? I meant alright. Did you, did you actually listen to me? Wow, I didn't think you'd be able to. That's great and all, but I still don't want to go first. It was calling me, and my legs listened. Step after step after step, the eyes got closer to my feet, and the more my feet tingled. Oh, I guess he's going first. There, Maple, you got your cushion. My blades make contact with the cold surface, and for a moment I just stand there. It was just how I remembered. Slippery, but wanted me to control it. Volatile, yet oddly obedient. Is he just gonna stand there? With slow, careful, bladed steps, I'll go around in a circle, feeling out everything. It's been too long. Uh... Whoa! The essence of the wind itself wound itself into my heel, and in a burst I took off. Faster and faster with each slide, my soul felt light. Yes, yes, yes! Oh, how I've missed you! The way my blades caress the floor, the way the wind plays with my hair and flecks, and flecks with the blood in my cheeks. This, this feeling of lightness, like a feather in the wind, like complete freedom. This is my heaven, my haven. Slide after slide, spin after spin, each action heightening my feeling. When I'm on ice, nothing can get me. Not my thoughts, not my friends, not my fears. Nothing. In this world of mine, it's just me and I. It's peace. I shouldn't have given up on you. You're my only source of quiet ever since my early years. But I'm glad I found you again. Like a parted friend, brought together again. Faces turn to me. Expressions of awe or surprise. But like everything else, it does not matter. It doesn't matter right now. Nothing outside of my own world mattered. Nothing was worth my attention right now. Each figure I dodged was an excuse for me to let myself loose. Each cheer I heard was an echo of my passion. Look at me, and look at me closely. When I'm here, I'm not afraid. Not of you, not of anyone, not of anything. I could not stop the smile that took over my face, and I could not help this burning feeling in my chest. This love and hope, something I had lost long ago. But like everything, but like everything, what is lost can be found once more. The wind started to subside, and the electricity in my feet had started to wear out. The high of the ice had started to go down to lower to a lower feeling, but still ethereal all the same. My speed was no higher than the average person sliding past now, and the turns I was making were finer, more delicate. This is that stage where I get to block out everything, everything but my thoughts. And now, I can finally sort out my feelings, at least a little bit. As I take laps of the zone, my own world starts to fade out. I start to pay attention to what's around me. Alright, Jonah. Think. What happened last night? Think about it. I think. Think. Th Shit! By the skin of my teeth, I narrowly evade a little child I was about to crash into. S Sorry! Fuck! I can't do it. I just can't. If I think about it, I just might feed into that thing. I might feel okay now, but every time I take a step forward, it pushes me two steps back. 
have to play it safe. Woo! Go Jonah! My head snaps in the direction of the voice, and I see the three holding onto the support fences, looking at me expectantly with bright smiles. Even Alder was really happy. It made me smile. Do a trick! A trick? Like, like, like what? It's been around a few times, but Andy does not seem satisfied. You can do better! His shout traveled across the ice's distance, and gladly none of the passerby paid it attention. A fancier trick, huh? Wouldn't hurt, right? Just this once. I turn to face them fully, mindful of the people passing by me and prepare myself. I start to glide towards them, but pick up my speed more and more. Wait, Jonah, what are you doing? Faster and faster I go until... Ah! Oh! Oh, wow! Pretty! I stopped abruptly, and the force made a veil of ice flakes fall over them in, a sh in shiny sequences. It took them a few seconds to process the fact that I was stood in front of them. Hey, dude, holy shit, I had no idea where you were so good! <laughs> it's not that big a deal. Not that big a deal. Have you seen yourself? You went like whoosh and meow when you were so majestic. <laughs> you looked amazing. Why did he have to say something, too? But thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I did. A lot. Don't go red, Jonah. I beg you. Do you guys need a moment, or...? Ah! Bastard. Whoa, what was that one for? For being a dick and for calling me a stuffed animal. Actually... The next second, Andy was thrown to the floor. So I'm tempted to step on you with this little bladed shoe right now. That maple's terrifying. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!